we have a lot of youth going through depression they're constantly anxious and you wonder but they're just starting out in life what exactly is getting them depressed <laughs> Today we'll be having a conversation on this and we are so excited to have you here with us. My name is Dokas. We're glad you're here to join us on today's episode of Fit Life. And with me here is Mr. Daudu Olubade, the convener of Teens Youth Court Fellowship. You're welcome, sir. Thank you so much. I'm glad that uh, I have this privilege to speak on this issue today. Thank you so much, sir. All right. All right. So um, I would like to ask, what exactly are the causes of this teens slash early youth, you know, depression? Thank you so much. Um, to be honest, the events of our time has put a lot of pressure on these people. For instance, a young man sees his other friends doing well, making money, yes. having progress, and it's just at his spot. Mm -hmm. So that's alone a pressure for him. And somehow some parents will say, look, see what your mates are achieving. Mm -hmm. okay. You are all, you are just here, you're not moving an inch. So that can put a pressure on the, on the child and he begins to think, how do I make a way out of this? Yes. And of course, desire to have money, okay. desire to be influential overnight, bring some of these people into anxiety are thinking in their minds, how can they get there? How can they really do what others are doing? And as a result, if, if they're not able to even get it done, that put them down. Mm -hmm. And of course, they can, the pressure can set it, and so many other things. Okay, now, um, from your example, I think you're looking at early youths, yes. or youths who are already working. Now, let's bring it back home. Let's look at the teenagers. Right. We see teenagers who are having a difficult time in life already. Despite the fact that they're still very young, you know, that they, they have a they, they have a difficult time in life. True. They're struggling through life True. at that tender age. What could likely be the causes of this, you know, struggle right. with life for teenagers? Yeah. Um, in my few years of working with teenagers, I discovered that a number of them do not have a very good home. Mm. There's no care. And I read a, a uh, there was a matter that came to me. This child wrote a note to the parents that, Mommy, you hate me. Daddy, you hate me. I'm going to kill myself. Wow. And because of that, so many things came up and it kind of helped the girl to, to, to think right. So it's possible that in a home, the child is not seeing himself herself as a child, as, that she is not wanted in the home. I have a case of one of my teenagers she actually attempted suicide. She almost died. She just cheated death that she didn't die. Because she said she felt that she was not loved. Nobody is caring for her. And that she, do, that she also feels that she doesn't know anything. In class, she was coming behind. She wasn't making any progress. So, of course, she went into depression and she wanted to take her life. So, it could be the fact that the home is toxic for the child. It could also be that peer pressure just like I said, it's possible that she sees or he sees what her mm -hmm. friends mm -hmm. are achieving and it's just there. In fact, I know of one who told me that, Pastor Badi, my cheeks are too big. And so I'm feeling small in the midst of my friends. So she, yes, mm -hmm. so she would rather stay at home. When there's a social guard, you say, no, I would rather stay at home. All right, so several of these can cause... Uh, this anxiety and of course they are going to depression and this has led some of them to drinking, mm. to smoking, to joining calls to build, like, to boost their confidence and so on and so forth. So basically you're saying that this is often why they rebel. The fact that they are misunderstood is basically why they rebel, they find themselves in, you know, associations they're not meant to find themselves Absolutely. in. Absolutely. Friends, friendship, keeping kind of keeping friends that you know they're not supposed to keep with mm. because they probably want to mirror themselves in a certain way that they're unable to basically i agree with you and be because you see first the feel that look if nobody loves me if i see a cultist who's showing me how i can boost my ego why you not the tiny amount of love yeah again it's possible that um friends Maybe giving them that look, we can't do this, daring them. Mm. And that alone can make anybody 
in that category to begin to uh, show rebellious attitudes. How can, okay, for a parent, for example, now, yes. how can they, you know, determine on time or discover on time that, mm. you know, the child is going through a difficult time or the child is getting depressed? How can a parent discover this? Okay. First, I want to add this that, you see, parenting in those days and now, a lot of difference. Mm. And it's not possible for me to train my children the way I was trained. Because we're left alone to the community to, to train us. Okay. We don't have such com communal living any longer. So for now, if a parent must find out if my child is going to depression, first, you will see that the child will be withdrawn from everybody. He will prefer to stay alone by himself. You will see him making strange uh, calls at strange time of the day. You see him moody. Others are eating together, saying, no, I'm not ready to eat. These are signs that something is wrong with this child. And of course, you will see that it will get more secretive. You won't like to talk to people, like to be on, on, on the so. So it's important that parents not take serious attention. Okay. All right. The child goes to, for instance, he goes for maybe music lesson in the evening, saying, I'm not going again. Or he goes, he comes too late. These are signs that something's wrong with this child that I must take attention to. Okay, so now looking at the Bible, how um, can we, you know, help these young ones overcome this depression? You know, how can we help them overcome this anxiety? You know, okay. we have the story of Elijah in the Bible. Yeah. Elijah was depressed and God was able to pull him out of mm. it. So now how can we help these young ones overcome these challenges that they're facing? Great. Now, you see, the Bible is complete. When people who were in the, who were in the past went through hard times, they had a way to go through it using the scriptures. Mm -hmm. First, I'll go back to parents. See, if parenting is done such that Bible is infused from the one, that a large extent will help the child. But if the child is going through depression, what do we do? The Bible has told us several places, cast all your burden upon me for I care for you. First Peter 5 verse 7. Mm -hmm. So telling the child to open up and release whatever is bothering him, bothering her, to the Lord. That's the first way to start. And then the parent holding the child by the hand, and look, let's kneel down together and talk to God about this trouble. All right? Philippians 4, I think, verses 6 and 7 say that do not be anxious for anything, but in everything. So anxiety will come, quote and unquote. But you see, there is a way out, is to have our trust in God. God knows that. This will happen. Jesus said, in this way, you have trouble. You have tribulation. It's for everybody, not even for teenagers, not for adults alone. Yes. So the anchor is that rest in the, in the Lord. Trust him that he's able to help us in this particular time. So this is the way out. The word of God is so efficacious. It's so strong. It's able to help us in such situations. So the child must be told about the word of God. The child must have strength enough in the word of God at that particular time of depression. Okay, so um, what if we have parents who are not very attentive to their children? Mm -hmm. You know, it happens where both parents are, are both um, working class and they're busy, they're busy, pe busy people, like you said, and they're rarely at home. Mm -hmm. They don't even understand what's happening with their children, their teenagers, and all of that. So how can we help these ones, you know, on their own? How can they overcome depression? How can they overcome this phase of their life? All right. It's, a, it's actually a big shame that this is happening in our society today. Parents are too busy. Mm -hmm. And then the burden is left to the church, to the pastors. And pastors have so many other things to do. So how many pastors will be taking his time to check, ah, your face looks dull today, what's happening? So for me, for children who are going through depression, they need, they just must cry out. They must cry out to their pastors or their uncles that they can trust, trusted people, that look, I feel this way. Otherwise, nobody will know and they may go into something more dangerous. 
Okay, so um, basically, what is what do you think is a take home for you know parents for teenagers for early youths? What is a take home for All right. them? Let me start from parents. First, parents must close the gap between them and their teenagers. Okay. Create time. Sit with them. Sometimes I force myself to go to my boy's room. I just sit in bed. Yeah, let's play in your room. We just, 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 just. It's a way to gauge what he's feeling, to know what are his values. Because he will tell me something about his friend. That will help me to know I need to pray about this. I need to talk, talk to him about this more and more. Now, the same we do with the girl. What's happening? Tell me more. What? And then, if you close the gap, you are able to even hear those things that are likely going to trouble him or trouble her. That will help us. Closing the gap, praying along with them, studying the word together. It's important that we say the word of God to them because that is the strength we have. When everybody goes away, you are left with yourself and the word of God. And it's sufficient to help us. So parents must do that. Now for teenagers, teenagers must learn to keep good association. Mm. Good association is key. Watch what you watch on TV, on your, on your social media. Watch those kind of people that want to be around, that you want to hang around. Who are your models? You will be shocked. Some of the models are teenagers run after today. That people do not value so many of the virtues that God wants us to value. So it's important that teenagers should re look at, I mean, this association you keep, the friends you keep, so that you don't fall. But and then for young people, see, you just started today. You want to start riding Homer Jeep. It's not so. You have to be patient. You have to go through the ladder. There is a process. God did not create everything in this world one day, mm. two days. So after six days, he rested. And then when he rested, he didn't do any other thing. So somebody wants to start today, I start riding. Have a long Toyota like, <laughs> like Rema is doing now. Okay? I'm sure Rema didn't start with a Toyota. Started from somewhere. So this is it. You should learn patience. They should learn that there is a process for any successful thing. That will, if you have anything that suddenly you just somebody will become rich tomorrow, watch in a moment the person will crash. Mm -hmm. This is why we have all this uh, money ritual stuff today because mm -hmm. no patience. You want to follow the process. You think that you need to make it faster than it should be. So these are my advice to those category of people: parents, close the gap, sit together with them, chat with them, pray with them, teach them the word of God. If I tell them stories, stories that are moral stories. That also bring you together, eat together, play together. That means they have confidence to share with you when they feel somehow. Mm. Ah, Daddy, I feel this way. Ah, this, this boy is always bullying me in the class. Mm. And because of this, I don't I don't get to attend other classes. So you understand? To open up. Exactly. Exactly. All right. So that's for parents. I'm just trying to recapitulate. But for teenagers, watch your friends. Who are your friends? What do you watch on the TV? How do you, what social media group do you belong to? Where are your interests? Those things will help you to, I mean, to, 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 to moderate your life so that you don't fall into, you know, because even when you are normal, quote and unquote, everything is okay with you, you could be anxious. Yes. I've written an exam before and I was anxious for the results. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> yeah, this person more brilliant than me, he failed, a person failed, of course. How the hey, will I feel also? So if care is not taken, I may lose it totally. So I'm saying that even when you are a child of God, you are flowing well, you could be so anxious. So say the least, somebody who is not so God conscious. And for young people, as we said, wait for your time. Be patient. Hold on to God. Your time is surely come. Thank you very much, sir. So basically, in summary, you're saying that for parents, close the gap yes. it is really important that they close the gap yes. with themselves and their children yes. the teenagers for teenagers surround yourself with quality people yes and then surround yourself with quality materials what you watch be be intentional with what you watch with what you hear with what you say mm. for young people beware of pressure exactly. and trust in god we're sure you were blessed with the conversation we had today if you have any questions anything you want us to talk about can you drop your comments in the comment section and do not forget to subscribe to our youtube channel god bless you